Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up an FTP server on your phone. Uh, what this will allow you to do, I'll show you here real quick, the final product. Uh, you'll just push uh, two clicks on your phone and one click on your desktop and you can browse all the files on your phone. Uh, you can drag stuff off, drag stuff on, it's much faster than the uh, MTP protocol that uh, uh, most of the Nexus devices force you to use because they don't support uh, USB mass storage uh, for various reasons. Uh, MTP is kind of a terrible protocol in my opinion. I'll let the argument for that go elsewhere, but uh, this is how you do FTP. It's much faster than MTP. It's a lot more reliable um, and all that. And best of all, it doesn't require you to have any cords. So you can do this with your phone you know, halfway across your house and you can still connect to it and browse your files. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and like I said, it's faster and more reliable, so very good. Okay, so how do you set this up? Well, you're going to need a app on your phone. Uh, there's quite a few FTP servers that you could use. Uh, all of them should have about the same settings. Uh, you can go by ratings if you want, but the one that I use is called FTP Server by Andreas Leibig or Liebig. Uh, I probably butchered his name. Sorry. Um, this is the one I use. I think it's the second result when you search. Um, really just chose it because it looks extremely simple and I like that it actually prints out all the FTP uh, uh, debug messages or whatever you want to call it uh, as it's doing stuff. Um, anyway, so once you've got this installed, you just open it. Okay, and by default I don't think it'll start the server automatically. And by the way, you want to make sure you're on your Wi-Fi before you start doing this. Um, if it has started, like if this button says stop FTP service, go ahead and click it to stop it because we need to change some settings. Uh, hit your menu button here and go to preferences. Okay. Now in here is where you set up, uh, these can be really whatever you want, almost all of these settings. Uh, basically you want to type in a username, I've set mine to username. And you want to type in a password, I've set mine to password for the purposes of this demo. Uh, port, I think by default is 21. You can go ahead and leave it at that. Uh, I changed mine to 5059 uh, for some reason or another back in the day. I just haven't changed it back yet. Um, this drop down here lets you choose what interface you want this to be serving over. Uh, default interface should work, or if you want to limit it just to your Wi Fi, which is really the only thing it's going to work over, anyways. Uh, then you can just choose WLAN 0 IPv4 and you can see it prints out your IP address there uh, 192.168.1.30 is mine um, at the end of this video I will give instructions on how to make sure that that IP address stays static and never changes because if it does change to another number then you have to update your shortcut on your desktop uh, which is just annoying so uh, okay next up would be your default directory uh, I recommend using slash mnt slash SD card uh, you can, if you want, you can uh, you can set this to like the root of your phone if you want to be able to browse your system folders and stuff. Uh, really not terribly necessary though. Um, and you can check this. This might be checked by default. Uh, you can tell it to only let you in like the the default directories um, rather than giving you full system access. Which, if you're not setting up a username and password, you might want to do that just to be safe. Um, anyway. Um, then lastly down here it'll list all of your Wi-Fi networks that you have saved and you can tell it which ones you want to allow stuff over. Both of these are on my home network uh, so I've set both of those to be checked on or you can just do any network and it'll try and work over anything. Um, but really since this is only going to be on uh, specifically when you're using it for this it's not going to matter. Uh, just set it to work on the ones that you know you're going to use. Okay now at the bottom I did save and restart service and now you can see blah blah blah, a bunch of messages, acquired Wi-Fi lock, that means it's now, uh, it is now waiting, uh, it's now waiting for connections on this address and this port, it'll say it on the top there. Okay, so this information is all we technically need to connect to it. Uh, we've already got our username, password, our port, and our address, um, and how you build your command out of there, uh, well, actually here, I'll show you how to connect to this by default. Uh, in Windows Explorer, uh, you just open you know, my computer window and go to the address bar and type in FTP colon slash slash and then you want to type in this full address that we have here uh, exactly as it is 192.168.1.30 and then you do colon and then the port number which is 5059 for me, yours will be uh, probably 21 
important, I just hit enter, and it's going to den uh, deny access because I didn't type any username and password. Uh, there's a way to do, do that in the address bar, which I'll show you. Uh, the other way, if you're already connected or trying to connect, is uh, just right click in this empty space here and choose login as, and then we can type in username and password. And there you go. There's all. There's all of our files. So this is working now. All we have to do is make a shortcut that'll cut down the uh, the work of connecting to it. Uh, I've already assembled a command here for you guys. Um, basically, all this is doing is it's launching Explorer the same way we just did, and then it's sending this to it as the address. So you can see you can put in the username and password in the address uh, just by putting username colon password at uh, before the actual address. So I'm going to copy this whole line, and this will be in the video description. Let me delete my shortcut here, and I will show you how to build that yourself. So you're going to right-click here, go to New, Shortcut, and then we're just going to paste that whole line here. Uh, obviously, you want to change the numbers, the ports, and the username and password to match whatever it is for your phone. And then just hit Next. Then we'll give this a, uh, a name, Galaxy Nexus FTP. Finish, and there you go. It's done. Uh, and now if you want to give this an icon, uh, just right click and go to properties. And this is also where you can go if you type something wrong to, to fix it. Uh, it would be this target box here. Uh, but under the shortcut tab, change icon. I'm going to do browse. And I saved a nice icon for this on my computer, so I'm going to go to Ben Sumner, uh, my documents. And this is where I saved it. Uh, it has to be a .ico file. PNG image into an ICO file, or you can probably just find one for your phone if you Google it. Um, I'll put the link to this one in the description. Uh, but you choose it, hit OK, hit Apply, and OK again. And then you have a nice little icon, it opens up the contents of our phone, and it will always work. So from now on, all you have to do is uh, go ahead and launch your FTP server. One click click start FTP service, one more click, and then you can just double click back on your desktop. Quicker than searching for your waiting on FTP to maybe possibly actually work for once. If you can't tell I kinda hate MTP, it's it's very unreliable and crashes and it's slow as heck, so um, this works out pretty well. If you guys have, uh, have any questions, I know I went through this pretty quick, but if you have any questions leave me a comment. Uh, like I said, all the commands will be in the description, and I will actually be making two more videos after this, uh, one for doing the same procedure on Mac, and one for doing the same procedure on Linux. Um, I will be using Ubuntu for that. Um, the only system, the only operating system that doesn't have FTP support built in, or at least full FTP support, is OS X. Um, they only have read support, uh, so if you did it directly through the operating system, you'd be able to get files off, but you couldn't put them on. Uh, kind of lame, but I'll show you how to get around that uh, by downloading FileZilla. It's uh, an FTP program. Basically, once this is set up, any FTP program can connect to it, so if you have another program you like, uh, you can do that. And you can see I have actually an icon here for my Nexus 7 and my Galaxy Nexus to launch with FileZilla. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions, leave me a comment, and thank you for watching the video.